Good morning and I'd like to welcome members to the 12th meeting in 2018 of the Standards, Procedures and Public Appointments Committee. Uh, our first item today is for the committee to take evidence on the proposed cross-party group on basic income. Um, I'd like to welcome Ivan McKee, MSP, to the meeting. Ivan is the co-convener of the proposed group and I'd like to invite Ivan to make an opening statement. Thank you. Good morning, committee. Um, Citizens' basic income, I think, is an issue that's gaining a lot of um, attention and traction. Different parties have talked about it. There's a lot of organisations looking at it. And we've, um, the Scottish Government's um, expressed some interest in understanding more about it. And there's now four pilots running or, or being looked at being ran in local authority areas. Um, the purpose of the cross-party group is to bring together the various strands of thought in this area because there are... Well, it's one subject, there are many different perspectives on how it could or should operate. So to bring different people that are interested together, to provide a forum for discussion, um, to bring in external speakers, to um, provide analysis of the theoretical and practical aspects, to look at international examples and to... Um, allow networking of the different groups and individuals and organisations that are uh, that are involved in working in this space. Um, we have, um, as you'll see from the papers, a range of organisations that are um, interested in participating. We have um, cross-party um, selection of MSPs and we don't believe that it um, crosses over or is duplicated by any other existing um, CPG. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, do the committee members have any questions? Aileen. Thanks. Thanks very much, convener, um, and welcome this morning, Ivan. Thank you. I just wonder, I, I, it's an interesting issue, obviously, and quite topical mm. at the moment, but I just wonder where you've said that um, the cross-party group would seek to run in parallel with the developing pilots in Scotland. You don't think that um, it's maybe a bit soon to set up a cross-party group? You don't think that, for instance, the, the you would then be doing the same work as the pilots? Do you think it would be, you know, it would add value to the pilots, for example? I think it would add value to them because I think it would give a forum. I mean, clearly it allows MSPs to get involved um, and bring their perspective to it, but also provides a forum in here where not just those involved in the pilots, which are going to be fairly practical, hands-on, looking at a specific area, how they would go about it, but, but also allow the theoretical aspects to be considered in the one place as well. So allow people from the different pilots to come together as well if they want to and, and make their input to that. So I think having, given, as you say, it is so topical, I think it's important that there is some forum within the parliament where it can be discussed. Okay, thanks, Kevina. Thank you, and good morning to Mr McKee. I just wondered, and I should declare an interest as a member of this proposed mm -hmm. cross-party group, what opportunities you see for working with other cross-party groups in the Parliament. For example, I attended a meeting of the cross-party group in industrial communities last night, and there was representatives from Fife there, obviously one of the pilot areas, and there was a great interest within the citizens' uh, basic income scheme. So I just wonder what opportunities there would be for the CPG to work with other CPGs in the Parliament. It's an interesting idea, and given that there are 98 other CPGs, I need to go through the list and figure out where the linkages were. But there could be many. I mean, we talk about health in here, which is an issue, um, physical health and mental well-being. Um, industrial communities is, is, is an obvious area. Um, entrepreneurship and creative industries is something where we think there's a, a potential um, crossover. Clearly, all the work on um, social security is very core to that. Um, and also another area that I'm very interested in around about automation, where, where I think um, uh, transition to new industries to help smooth out that process is going to be fairly critical. So I think you're right, there are many different CPGs potentially where we could have common interest. Thank you. Just following on from uh, Elaine's, uh, Elaine Smith's question, um, have you reached out to the, the councils that are involved in the pilot, either officials or councillor level, to seek their membership or involvement? We, we have, and there's an interesting discussion going on there that I'm, I'm, I need to do a bit more, um, get, get a bit of a better understanding on. Um, there seems to be a, a feeling among some of those involved in the pilots that they should stay um, not officially, or they should not be officially part of the CPG right. because it might... Um, compromise is, is too strong a word, but it, it may be that, that, that there's a perception that they want to, to be separate but understand what the CPG is doing. So I think the CPG could inform what they're doing, um, but certainly some of the, the people in or some of the, the, the pilot groups, um, it's not clear whether they would want to be officially part of the CPG at this stage. But certainly we're well aware, we have reached out, and we're very keen to share whatever learnings we have with them. 
I can see that councils corporately might take that view. Individual councillors, it might be less of a less of a barrier. Potentially, yes. I think we're, we're, actually, we're exploring sure. how best to do that. Thank you. Tom. It, um, strike, this is a, seems to be a single issue policy group as opposed to a general interest group. What would happen if the legislation was passed? What would happen to the group? Oh, OK. <laughs> That's a good question. Um, I think that, um, that we're a long way from that. Um, that's the first point I would make because no, the Scottish Parliament doesn't even have all the powers yet to do that. Um, so we're a long, a long way from that. Um, if that came to pass, then there would still be issues around about how the rollout was working um, and issues that, that, that came on the back of that. Um, as I said, it, and, and how it, the, the process could be, or the system as implemented could be tweaked because that effectively would then be our welfare system. Um, so how that would work, but as it says, it's broader than that because it impacts on health agenda, on um, automation agenda, um, on um, business agenda. There's a whole range of agendas where it impacts. I think even if it was implemented, which I think is, is still a long way off, um, there would still be scope for discussion around about how it was working and how best to leverage it to best affect those other agendas. Um, I, I'm just, in my mind, I'm still sort of questioning whether it really is a interest group as opposed to a lobby group, because it's so narrowly focused on just one p p policy issue. Um, convinced me otherwise. Well, as I say, I think that the scope of it is huge, right? Well, um, the it's scope a com is huge. It's the completely. Well, it's a completely different way of looking at um, how we do welfare, but it's broader than that as well because it, um, it, it's very focused on the, the transition of society in terms of the industries that we have at the moment and careers we have at the moment to where we're going to go in the future. And it allows it, that process to be smoothed. So I think um, if you think if you consider welfare in its widest sense to be um, to be a single issue, then you might have a point. But I think it's it's much broader so why, than just one policy. It a, well, a social security or welfare. Because it's broader than that, as I've said, because it impacts on all these other areas as well. I mean, I'm having conversations with, with, with the FSB at the moment about how it might impact small businesses um, and what their members' pers perspective on it would be, which is a whole discussion that needs to be opened up and had. Um, uh, so I think in terms of the future of, of what we want society to look like, conceptually and in practical terms, it's, it's a forum that allows that discussion to take place. Jamie. Thanks very much. Um, morning, Owen. Morning. Um, I think some of the things that Tom's saying there, I would I would kind of agree with. It is very narrow. Sorry, the policy itself is a narrow policy. I appreciate that you're mm -hmm. looking to widen it out. On that basis, um, the organisations you've got involved there um, are again possibly quite narrow in, in, in their focus. But you've talked about meeting, mm -hmm. uh, discussing with the FSB. Mm -hmm. Will you be looking to widen out that oh, yes. group of? Yeah. And have you got other organisations that may not be signed up yet, but that you're talking to that um, demonstrate that kind of? Yeah, well, I think that that, that is that is one. I mean, I think that the RSA is a fairly broad scope as well. I mean, they look yeah, at a lot of stuff, right? Um, it's, um, and I think that will develop as we go forward. But I think, yes, yeah, so the RSA is broader. I think business organisations I'm, I'm very keen to engage with. Um, and I think as we get more into the discussion, it will become apparent what other organisations there are um, that we could... Um, I mean, SCDI is another potential organisation I've done work in the automation space where this could have a direct impact on how that transition would operate. So I think as we, as we develop, I'm very keen to bring in a much broader range of organisations because I think the key, one of the key issues about it, one of the key objectives of the CPG is there, there are those who come at it from an equalities perspective, which is great, um, but there are many other aspects to this as well. And I think sharing, cross-fertilising, all of those ideas, I think, is, is a valuable um, function of the CPG. Okay. Just, just very quickly, as a Highlands and Islands MSP, mm. Uh, I'm obviously very concerned that to, to make sure that people within my constituent, my region, can can be involved in any cross-party group that feel involved in Parliament. How will you ensure that they they are that they are able to be involved? You're very welcome to come along and. and <laughs> but I mean, why not sure just are. me? But, but yeah, you know, interested groups or people, those with experience and that might be able to, you know, 
have be, be of real benefit to the to the workings of the group. Well, that's a good point. I think, um, yeah, I mean, we can put on the agenda to look at the the, um, the the geographical impact and make sure we are also reaching out to um, to organisations that specifically focus um, in the Highlands and Islands, for example. Absolutely. Okay. No further questions? No. Uh, thank you very much, Ivan McKee, for coming along today. Uh, we, the committee will make a decision on whether to approve the cross-party group at its next agenda item, but we'll suspend briefly to allow you to leave. Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs>